Now you met Jim in our last episode of NCIX Tech Tips, but while he was here, he actually brought along a pretty cool little presentation that he showed to me, and I thought we'd do a little video about it as well. So here on the table we have samplings from most of these significant changes in CPU design from AMD, and this is mostly focused on different sockets, but what I'd like Jim to do is give us a bit of a history lesson on what's changed in AMD's processor design from day one up until the episode we just talked about, which was Bulldozer and what's coming for the future. Well, like Sherman and Mr. Peabody, let's take a trip in the Wayback Machine, shall we? That's a bit of an old reference for me, but I think some of our viewers will definitely get it. Those of you who get it can write in or email in and let us know. <laughs> anyway, so let's go back to something that we've done in the past. So this would be the 486. So the 486 was uh, one of the first CPUs that AMD developed. Um, so you can see the Certified for Windows logo on there. Um, and uh, it's kind of interesting, so 486 technology. Okay, now beyond that, we went to the K5. There were some issues with the um, naming conventions of some of the CPUs and products. So we went with the technology K5. K5, what does K stand for? K5 means kryptonite, and there's another reference too for trivia for later on in the past. Is that really what the K stands for? Uh, I believe kryptonite kills Superman, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Here is the K6. So the K6 was the first to feature the multimedia instructions or the MMX instruction set. This was one of our first widespread selling CPUs that everybody embraced in a home technology. In fact, Compaq, uh, the company at the time, was one of the first ones to use it in a desktop computer. The K6. That begat the K6, the K62, and the K63, depending on the cache and the speed inside. Well, uh, as we go to a newer architecture, everybody said, hmm, we need more cache, more internal cache on the CPU. So hence, we came up with the AMD slot A processor. Now this is kind of naked right now, I've taken the plastic yeah. shield off it, but you can see the CPU in the center, and you can see the die on either side uh, that goes along with it. So pretty interesting, this is a modular architecture, and you plug this into slot A, so slot A processor. And this is all actually uh, well before my time. I, my, my family had a 486, but um, I was definitely not, not into the technology. So where Jim's going to be about to go, this is where I actually pick up, and I started building my own PCs and overclocking and doing all the things that you guys like to watch me do. So sure. what do we have next? Okay. Well, as the uh, slot A processor, that was one of our first CPUs and the first CPU to break the one gigahertz barrier. So let's move on to the next one. So this would be like the Athlon XP. The Athlon XP, now this is kind of a Frankenstein chip here because you have large caches on the top of the uh, packaging itself. But it's kind of nice to show off. And you still have those great uh, pins on the back. So the socket A, we went from slot A to socket A technology with the pins and all that. So this would be an Athlon XP and the first use of the word Athlon. Okay. So, and as we get better and faster and bigger on that, we go to more of a micro pin grid array. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's just say the pins got real small and tiny. So if I flip it over, there's about 940 pins to this particular package. Uh, you've got the Keen on there. And this is of the era of the first Opteron, mm -hmm. the Athlon, and also the Phenom. As the Phenom's kind of come in the same package, we've changed the cutout areas on the back, we've changed the pinout, control the structure inside. And with that particular package, we've actually gone all the way from DDR1 to DDR3, am I right? That is correct. Um, and that's one of the things that makes this history list lesson a little bit challenging. I'm actually going to reach past and grab this chip again because this represents so many different technologies. We've gone from single channel memory to dual channel memory. We're using completely different memory controllers. We've gone from single core CPUs all the way up to six core CPUs that all look just like this. 
So this really represents everything that was ever based on the K8 or the original Opteron, which we talked about a lot in our last episode. So why don't we talk about what is the most current possible thing, the newest stuff coming out of AMD, because remember I said that goes back to the original Opteron. The way AMD works is we tend to get these technologies at the server level, they find their way down to the desktop. What are we using at the server level now? Sure. And uh, a current Opteron, or at least a semi-current, is the 1207 Landrid array package. So as you notice, it's a uh, kind of a slim front on that. The heat spreader, of course, is copper, um, but it's uh, plated with nickel so that it doesn't corrode or get um, um, any uh, streakings on it. But the back of it is a Landrid array. So essentially, it's a pad. Right, exactly. And as I scoot it over here, uh, pins to pads. And the pads have the contact in the motherboard and the socket itself. So this is a socket 1207, hence because the number of pads in the architecture. Uh, this would be our noted for Barcelona, Shanghai, and Istanbul for the Opteron level. The land grid array has not made it to the desktop part yet, although that might be coming up in the future. Well, that's funny you should mention that, because that's one of the cool things about socket AM2+, Plus as well as AM3, and even AM2 to a certain extent, is that the reason AMD hasn't, I would speculate, made a change like that is for backwards compatibility. Over the last several generations, we've seen that you can actually take new AMD chips, plug them into an old AMD board, even though the socket's not quite identical, and there is a way to make it work, which is very cool. That upgrade in technology has carried us along quite a bit. Uh, instead of forcing the, um, the builder to change every single board with every single CPU they get, they might have a little bit of carryover to be able to do that. Absolutely. So show us the latest and greatest and what we might be able to hope for on our desktops someday. Sure. Uh, the latest and greatest package is the G34. So it's actually the socket based off the socket G3 and the socket G3 sorry, the socket G4, hence G34. And this, as I turn this around, is still a land grid array, and it has 1944 pads on that. So I will simultaneously hold up both, so 1207 to um, 1944. And if you think about it, there are two die under the heat spreader package compared to the one die in the 1207. This allows our server technology to have up to 12 cores inside one package. That's quite an accomplishment. All right, well, thank you very much for that little lesson on AMD's processor design over the years. Remember, this does go back, like I said, longer than I've even been into computers. So it was a lot of fun to have you here. Great. And thank you for coming on the show. Thanks very much for having me.